Welcome to our Wednesday Wisdom. This is where we go over tips, tricks, and information about band instrument repair. Today, we're going to go over how to remove a broken neck screw. But before we go into that, we're going to um, we're going to go over to our hashtag. Oh, we got a hashtag here. What Everybody is, knows the deal. What is it? Like, there Bro it is. Broke my neck screw. Broke my neck screw. Broke my neck screw. 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 So broken. So make sure to put that in the comments below to win 15% off of any of our courses that are coming up. We do have a winner from last week. We do. Ah. And I'm going to try to make sure I pronounce this right. It is Don McSwain. McSwan? McSwain, yes. Okay. Don? Don McSwan. M-C-S-W-A-I-N. Don. Go ahead and send Rich an email. Yep. And maybe he'll get you the discount code. And also check out some of our courses that are coming up for next year in 2024 as well. We got some. Here we go. There so, they are right yep. there. Boom, boom, boom. Speaking of courses, yeah. we just got done with the saxophone. That was uh, June, the end of June here, 26th through the 29th. Uh, we just got done with our saxophone basics done. Right, we got some a slideshow. It was ready. Yeah, it was it was a, it was a good week. Man. It was a good time. It was a good time. There you can see. Ah, oh, there they are. There's some of them you can see. Uh, that's little that's bits the of hot them. topic right there. That is. Yeah, we're talking about soldering. So we had a couple uh, uh, participants. I call them uh, come from all over the country. We had one drive from Massachusetts, Georgia. Uh, Louisiana and Indiana. Yep. So they came from all over. And they all uh, know. They did. Which was, which was kind of cool. Yeah, very nice. They could bring tools home back with them. Absolutely. Which a lot of them did. Uh, but yes, with four days, it was uh, a basics done right of saxophone repair. Uh, a lot of these people were hobbyists or, you know, techs in training. Yep. Uh, so they wanted to kind of get some skills on saxophone repair so there we are gathered around the soldering bench i went over some soldering basics with them oh there we are gathered around the jackson's big oak barbecue tree not doing soldering that's right not that soldering be, be there. not soldering there <laughs> uh, but there you can see gathered around my bench where we can kind of talk about some saxophone related things i think we were probably going over um materials and key interactions uh during that one and we got uh let's see one more there i am working with another one of the participants john yep. it was a good time all around it was four days they spent here on the course. We got them set up with the bench. They had tools. They all had project horns. Yeah, it was great. Uh, so there was a lot of hands-on time. They would kind of come in. We went over assessment, uh, how I do assessing in the Sax Pro Shop, uh, and then I kind of set them loose. They did a lot of things on their own. Uh, and it's nice having only a certain amount. We limited to six. Six. This, this is seven. We limit six. <laughs> six people. Uh, we only had four, which was nice because they got extra individual time. I can kind of go around and work with them as far as, whoa, don't want to oh, Hello. Uh, we don't, you know, um, I could work with them as far as individual projects relating to their project horn. Makes but, it yeah. more personal. Yeah, nice. exactly. And it was a great time. We went out to lunch. Uh, you can see Jax's Big Oak Barbecue. We took them to the Wilmington favorite uh, Flame and Amy's Burrito that's, Barn, that's a good time which too. is always a good time. So, uh, yeah, yeah it, was, it was a great time. So make sure you enter that hashtag. There it is, broke my neck screw into the comments. And since it's YouTube, entered into both sets of comments. There's the live comments and then there's the more permanent comments. Yep. Entered into both comments there, uh, broke my neck screw, and that'll get you to enter a chance to win 15% off one of our upcoming courses. And we just added a bunch onto our website, didn't we? We certainly did. Yep. yep. So check all that stuff out because we have we have some cool stuff planned for next year too, up yes. in 2024. So now, yes. During the course, and this was also a viewer viewer requested one as well. We had a we had a couple of questions about like if the next screw on the saxophone gets broke, yeah, what the heck are we gonna do? That's right. So we're all so, clear on yeah, what's going on here? So what what's the deal do? with next screws? What are the tools? How do we how do we how do we go about this problem? Yeah, this is the guy right here. This neck tightening screw. You put your neck in, you tighten this guy down, and all of a sudden it breaks off. Okay, we're gonna go over a couple of the tools, and you can see I have them laid out here. Uh, that we're going to use or possibility to use to remove that broken neck screw in your receiver. The very first is obviously coffee. You need this. Got to have it. You got to have it. You need to start working. Uh, a couple other things. I do have a uh, regular drill bit. And the reason why I call it a regular drill bit is because I have some non-regular drill bits over here we're going to talk about. So I have a regular drill bit. I have some masking tape. I'll show you what that's used for here in a bit. Uh, I have these guys right here, which are some specialty Drill bits, these are left-handed drill bits. Uh, we'll talk about that. I have some broken screw extractors right here. I have some penetrating oil. We'll talk about when or where we would use this. I have a very specialty device right here for actually removing broken neck screws. Yep. And then I have jeweler saw and then obviously a screwdriver. So 
We obviously have a, a, a next screw that is broken as well. So the first things first oh, there is, we there we are. Uh, I guess we should go over the first technique for removing yeah. the neck screw. So here we are oh, up look close. At that. Look at that, up close and personal. So, so what I did is I just grabbed out of the drill bit set a drill bit that is big enough that it won't interfere with the internal threads in this guy right here. Right, so you can see if I use something too big, uh, I will damage those threads. Guys, this drill bit is steel. This is brass. This brass is going to lose every single time. So you want to yep. be very careful if you're going to attempt to remove your broken neck screw by yourself. But there are some precautions we can take when we're using this drill bit. The very first is some masking tape. All right. What I'm going to do with this is wrap this around. Really all I need from this drill bit is just the very end. You can see just that little tip right there sticking out. So what I'm going to do with the rest of this is I'm just going to wrap a little bit of masking tape around it. I don't want to wrap too much because I don't want to make this too thick that it's not going to fit in. So That's maybe just, tip. yeah, just one or two times around. And now what this will allow me to do is try to grab the end of it. This is where it broke off. Okay. So this is where I would be tightening and loosening. What I'm going to use with this is I'm going to use it on that opposite side right here. And I would suggest using this in either just by your hands or maybe something to hold on to it. I wouldn't suggest using this with a hand drill. What do you think, Leroy? Nah, hand drill. No. Is nope. This... Hand drill. No. Nope. Leroy, see, Leroy agrees. No hand drill. Why? Why? Why wouldn't we want to use a hand drill with this guy. It's anything with power, like I'll say the, the lack of control, if, if it's going under power, you have a lot, you have a lot less control over it. So anything that's I'll say by hand or whatever, it's easier to stop. Yeah. Way more control, much better. Absolutely. So uh, I, I encourage you guys to do this by hand or if you are a technician and do have a bench motor, you can use your bench motor, but again, hand. using it by hand. So not necessarily doing it under power. Um, and what I would do is I would do it like I'm trying to drill a hole and hopefully this will catch and actually work it back out this way. Remember, this is where it broke off. So I want to work it back out. Yep. Okay. Not always can it go all the way through, especially if when it was broken, maybe it, the, the threads got bent. Okay. So oh, don't yeah. think you can just run it right directly through. I'm trying to back it out this way, which is why I'm using a regular drill bit to try to get that and grab it. And hopefully I can get it to go out. All right. Let's say that doesn't work and we got to go to plan B. What I can do here is I have these specialty drill bits. Look at those guys. Yes, which are, and you can see I have so many because they are left-handed drill bits. Okay. So what this means, and these are specialty drill bits. What this means is when I need to drill an actual hole, I'm going to run this in reverse. Okay. So I'm going to run it Okay, basically counterclockwise, what that's going to do is because these are reverse drill bits, it's actually going to start to drill in. If I did that with a regular drill bit and I ran it counterclockwise, it wouldn't want to drill in. No, okay, it, it would just, want to come back out. It would just dance there. It'd be, okay. it'd have fun. So when I use this, I'm running it in reverse. And the reason why when I'm using it in reverse is I am going to go from that broken side. Okay, maybe I can't get it all the way through for whatever reason. I'm going to use this left-handed drill bit, running it in reverse, again, either by hand or uh, maybe a pin vise or, uh, you know, a bench motor by hand. By hand yep. okay? And I'm trying to make that left-handed drill bit running in reverse, trying to catch. And a lot of times, one of two things happen. Either it does drill a hole, which is what I want when I use my next tool here, or this drill bit catches, and then all of a sudden, because I'm running in reverse, it's going to back that screw out. Okay. So we have a couple different options uh, as far as that goes. So let's say I use my left-handed drill bit. It drilled a hole, but it didn't come out. Now what I can use are the, one of these guys right here, and I have a couple different sizes. And these are broken screw extractors. Or easy outs. Easy outs, okay? And it has that twist right there. So what I've done is you use these in conjunction with the left-handed drill bits. So I've drilled my hole on the broken side. Okay, using my left-handed drill bit. Hopefully it worked it out a little bit. If it didn't, didn't, it did drill a little bit of hole. So I can now use my broken screw extractor, stick that in. And when I run this in reverse, this special twist on it should grab and work that screw out. Yep. Okay? So you can see you have some specialty tools that will get the job done. But if you're going to use a broken screw extractor, use a left-handed drill bit. Absolutely. Okay? And again, we're working from that broken side. Now, let's say for whatever reason, that it's kind of frozen in there, okay? Or it's, it's stuck in there. 
What you can use is a little bit of oil. And in fact, what we have here, this is called PB Blaster. It is a penetrating oil. Oh, that stuff's great. It is fantastic. And this is typically what's used in the bandage repair trade for removing pivot screws that are stuck in posts, okay? Uh, because that steel in the screw, it tends to rust and corrode, and it can kind of just fuse itself in there. What you're gonna use is this penetrating oil, and this is designed to get in those, those tight cracks. Uh, I know I've used it in the past. You drip a little bit on, maybe you wave your, your butane torch at it to kind of thin it out. Uh, I know you have some tips on this, because I heard it last time on the Facebook video, so. <laughs> Might as yeah. well tell this for might, might as well tell this. Yeah. Um, and when you're, when, um, I've done this a lot with uh, brass repair too. So it's when you have stuck slides, there's like a bunch of funk and crud in there. Same kind of thing happens with like either pivot screws or the next screw can happen in there. Um, put the oil in there. You can either heat it up from either with a little butane hand torch or an air torch. Air torch works great. Air torch works great. Uh, and then once you heat that up a little bit, um, give it a small, like a, more of a soft hammer. So like a rawhide hammer or something like that. And just basically, pretend my hand is a hammer. I didn't yeah. grab one. I didn't know he was going to talk about this. On, tip. The, on the fly, uh, but but, slight, <laughs> but slightly tap the area. And what that does is it'll is, is there's any crud and stuff in there. It'll like it'll help break up that material so you can help remove the screw. Just like yeah. tapping. Yeah. Just like tapping. Yeah, yeah you're not you're not wailing on it. Try to hammer it out. You're just like tapping, like like what you said. That'll kind of agitate things and kind of yep. break that that bond up. So, PB blaster penetrating oil fantastic for this and you would use this in conjunction with what we've kind of already talked about as far as all the these stuff. all techniques yep. okay you can use it if you're not sure use it at the beginning and then try the regular drill, drill bit with the masking tape or use a little bit of it and try your left-handed drill bits then try your broken screw extractor yep. um we have some other ones we haven't talked about which are right here this guy right here is a specialty tool and this is actually made to remove broken yep. screws, basically what we have here. Um, this tip right here is a hardened tip, and you can see if I can hold this steady enough without my coffee interfering with it. Um, it has kind of a <laughs> jagged edge to it. It almost looks like a miniature hole saw, okay? With a, with a bunch of little tiny teeth. And what you can do is you can usually work this from the non-broken side, because remember, I want to work it out. I can get this in here and I can actually grab, and you can see those teeth actually dig in and my screw is actually moving. Look at that. Oh, look at there. So you can see, you can use this. Again, you can use this in conjunction with your penetrating oil, your PB blaster, okay? Uh, let's say for whatever reason, maybe it's broken off and you have just a little bit sticking off. A lot of times you can use a jeweler saw, okay? And you can actually make a slot in it. So I would actually mm -hmm. saw it, make a slot, and then I would use my traditional screwdriver that would actually then get in there and back it out like a regular screw. Again, if it's real tight in there, you could use a little bit of PB Blaster or any kind of really thin oil. Yeah. The the uh, low viscosity, which I think is the thinnest oil, also works well yes. for this. Yep. So, you guys saw some tips and some tricks. I saw what you did there, saw some uh -huh. tricks. Tricks, tips and tricks. So there you go. So, but no, um, I did have a couple of questions for you though. Okay, uh, lay it on me. Lay it on. Uh, for some reason, there's damage to the receiver itself. Like it either got dropped or something hit it or whatever. And the screw broke either from the impact or when someone was trying to tighten it. How would you go about fixing that problem? First thing is determining how that screw broke. It, it yep. could be maybe you just have an old horn and that screw has just been, been under a lot of stress. And maybe you've been working out a little bit. And, you know, you, maybe you don't know your own strength so much anymore. Um, so you go and, just, and it just snaps off. Or like what you said is maybe there was some kind of trauma yeah. that happened. Maybe it got hit or maybe it got dropped and that's what broke that next screw off. You have to look again all the way around here. We got to look at our receiver, okay? If this hit here, we could have some damage to the receiver. And if we do have damage to this receiver, my go-to is replacement, okay? okay. Um, Sometimes you can work around this and, and, and round that out, but I find the best and most surefire way is to replace the receiver. If it's a newer horn, it's a matter of uh, ordering a replacement part. Right. If it's an older horn like this one right here, it's a matter of jumping on the lathe and actually machining this part separately, machining this part separately, yep. soldering together, making your slot so it's a whole process uh, for actually fabricating a new receiver. Uh, but that is the most surefire way to, way to ensure that your neck and your receiver fit tightly together. Cool. That okay. makes a lot of sense. So, um, so say all that stuff, say they fixed all that stuff. 
and they still need the screw. Where yes. are they going to go about getting the screw? So let's say for whatever reason, you know, you, 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 you were able to get it out using the drill bit and masking tape. Perfect. Awesome. But now you need a screw. Yeah. Now you need a screw. All okay? right. Um, what I would do is I would contact either your local technician or your local music store, uh, and they would be hopefully more than happy to order you one. I've actually seen it where technicians are making screws. I've made one. I know you've exactly. probably made one yep. in, in the past as well. Um, it's a very easy thing to do if you have the right know-how and the right machinery yep. to make a new neck screw. And I've seen all kinds of aftermarket neck screws out there. So uh, I mean, all bad. kinds of stuff. Yeah, I've seen one that gets rid of gingivitis. I mean, Ooh. one that will, will, will cure your rickets. I mean, all <laughs> kinds. So um, the, the, the sky's the limit when it comes to accessories and aftermarket stuff. But yep. contact your local music store, contact your local technician. They would be more than happy to help you out on getting a new next screw. Cool. Um, speaking of the next screw and say kind of just tightening that whole thing and all that other stuff. Yes. Is neck fit an issue or? Oh my gosh, yes. I'm not even going to let you finish that question. <laughs> You shut your mouth right now. Um, no, neck fit is extremely important. And like I said, especially if you've had some kind of trauma happen to this yeah. where it's been hit, you're able to get that neck screw out. You're checking the roundness of your receiver. You have to make sure that your receiver and your, and your neck tenon fit tightly. It's a, like a leak, everything else. If you have a leak up here, it's gonna affect every yeah. single note Absolutely. thereafter. Absolutely. So, um, and it does receive wear, you know, you're putting this in, you're tightening it up. Yep. You know, it's, it, it does tend to get some wear in there. One bonus tip, and this is for the YouTube only. I didn't do this for the oh. Facebook one. Here's a tip, guys. Anytime your instrument is in the case and the neck is not in the receiver, this neck screw should be loose. Yeah, that's, okay. a, good, that's a good one. That's a very it's good not one. necessarily for about breaking the neck screw itself. It's about warping this yeah. round receiver. And honestly, here's admission time. I didn't know to do that. I was one of those that anytime I put it away, I would put my end cap in like a good saxophone boy does, but then I would tighten that tight. neck screw oh. up yeah, just a little bit, but now I know, okay, don't do that. Okay. So don't tighten your neck screw when there's nothing in it. That'll keep this nice and round and it'll keep that seal, yep. you know, longer, uh, better, longer. Yep. And now that he's a tech and we got, you know, two techies talking. That's right. We got two techs talking on a Wednesday, you know, we know better. Yeah, we, we do. We do. I do. Well, I do now. I learn from my mistakes. Exactly. And I learn even more from your mistakes. See? Exactly. So, there you go. <laughs> yeah. um, so, so, so any of these techniques that we went over, whether it be the drill bit or the, the jeweler saw thing, can any of these be done, I'll say, with either hobbyists or technicians or whatever at home? Leroy, if I can do it, they can definitely uh, do it. Okay. But yes, this can be done. You can see there's just a couple little specialty tools. The biggest thing is just to be very, very careful okay especially when you're dealing with dealing with drill bits yeah. these are hardened bits they will go through brass like a hot knife through um i don't know uh i can't believe it's not butter yeah okay or margarine maybe. and even to, even okay. on, even not under power that's right so yes even under power so just being very careful if you're not yep. sure at all for any means bring it to your local tech yep. okay this is a job that they've done many many times we have specialty tools for this that we can do you know these guys right here so we can do all kinds of things um, that you might not be able to do at home. So if you're Absolutely. unsure at all, bring it to your local technician. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, cool. awesome. I don't have anything else. Do you have anything I else? think that's out. We'll just remind them one more time. Broke my next screw. My next screw. Put it in the comments, both comments that gets you entered into the 15% discount for one of our courses. And we have a quite a bit coming up. Uh, if you want to check our website, in fact, I'll probably be updating the calendar here momentarily mm -hmm. uh, just to kind of remind them because this is, of course, a commercial. Uh, but there they are. There it is right there. That's next the one coming up. Two more this year. Yep, September. Unfortunately, we had to postpone reschedule our July Clarinet Basics course, but we do have our advanced saxophone course coming up in September yeah. 18th through the 21st. Again, here in sunny Wilmington, North Carolina, right on the coast. Uh, and then in October, I know it's our favorite, yes. hand engraving. Yes, absolutely. Fun stuff. I love that course. That's a good one. So, Leroy, send them off. That's awesome. Thanks for all the great information. Next week, Rich and Ryan will be back. Well, we're, they're going to be working on taking and removing stuck rods in Roller and key rollers. Ah, wow, stuck rods and key rollers. Yeah, a lot of stuck stuff. Yep, yeah, and that's always so, a problem. The summer of stuck. The summer of stuck. Hashtag summer of stuck. That also counts if you put hashtag summer of stuck. That will also count as right. my next group. Ryan only gets two cents on that. That's right. So, awesome. All right. right. And, and until then, I think the send-off is... Happy repairs. That's right. Wave. Keep waving. <laughs>